Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool pinball repair video for you this evening. We are have been working on a Williams Pennant Fever, which has the distinction of being the only released Williams System 8 game. And it used this board, which is a System 8 board, was only used in this game. Uh, there's also a prototype game that it was used in, but pretty much this is it uh, that you can actually get your hands on. And they were actually pretty common. They sold a ton of Pennant Fevers. Uh, we ended up with two of them, and we've been fixing them all this week. So where have you been, if you're just now turning in, tuning in? Where have you been? So go back and watch the first videos if you can. We did one where we took them all apart and showed everything inside of them. Then we did another one where we fixed the power supply and the board on one of them. And then we did another one where we fixed the, we fixed the power supply on the second one. But we were able, unable to get the board completely working because it has major corrosion damage to it from the batteries. So like is common on a lot of pinball machines, they mounted a battery holder right here on this board. And over the years, they left old AA batteries in it and they rotted all over the board. So it has alkaline damage all over it. The board mounts in the game like this. The batteries were here, so gravity had the alkaline destroy <laughs> much of what you see here. So... It's fairly severe, and you can't get a replacement board for this because, it, it, like I said, it was only used in one game. Um, oh, System 9 is different because the displays work differently. Um, there's probably some other differences too, but that's the main difference. So we basically had to fix this board, and it's pretty damaged. So I don't think there's really any hope of us making it perfect, which I'm using it as an excuse not to make it perfect. <laughs> All right. So the game is actually up and running with this CPU in it. But the reason for that is because when Williams made it, they divided up the, uh, the board into sections. So basically, this is a 6808, which appears to be the main CPU. Here's the two main ROMs. And then it's using a, um, this is a PIA to interface, I guess, with the sound system maybe um, and there is a RAM chip here so all of this is the functioning of the of the uh, uh, over here you have all the lamps I believe these may be the solenoids or maybe some of these are the solenoids whatever but all of that's working so the game is up and running but the sound doesn't work because it was the part that was affected by the batteries and it seems to have its own um, CPU that was in a socket, but the socket is pretty damaged, and there's corrosion on all the pins. I'm going to guess, just ahead of time, that the chip is probably still fine, but it wasn't making good contact in the socket because the socket is corroded. So we're going to replace that socket. And then this is the EEPROM for the sound. Same thing, you've got corrosion on the legs, but they're not crazy enough that I think it went inside the chip. So I think that the EEPROM is probably fine. That won't be a big deal if we have to make another one anyway. And also the CPU we've got. Uh, but the socket is horrible. You can see there's, you can see some of the legs, the pins in the socket, and some of them you can't. So, I mean, it obviously wasn't making good contact. And then we've got corrosion all over the board. Now, this is alkaline, which is a, ba which is a base. So this is not battery acid, it's battery alkaline, which is the exact opposite. The only reason you really need to know that is because we're going to have to neutralize it with something here in a little bit. And we're going to neutralize it with vinegar, which is an acid. So you want to use the opposite on the pH scale. Um, so what I'm going to try to get away with, again, we're not going to make this brand new. It's it's not possible. What I'm going to try to get away with is remove the parts that are obviously damaged. And then I'm going to try to just in that spot, clean up the traces as good as I can, put some vinegar on it, and then rinse the vinegar off. Um, and then replace the parts and just do what I can. So just looking at it, this uh, amp is a TDA 2002. It's destroyed, but I've got new ones of those. It's no big deal. So I'm going to remove all that and clean up around it and put a new one on it. Um, this stuff here looks savable to me if I can clean up the legs a little bit. This stuff, most of it looks savable. Same thing, if I can clean up the legs, um, I should be able to get away with it. This chip looks fine. Socket needs to go. This PIA, I think will be alright, but I need to clean up 
<laughs> the board around it. Um, who knows about these two? The 6810 looks all right, um, but the board around it, the socket needs to be replaced. Once you're over here, you've got a little bit of corrosion, but it's not horrible. So, like, you got stuff like that, which is a little scary. Um, and this area here is about the worst. So we'll see what we can do with that. But as of right now, our sound is completely dead, which we discovered in the very first video, if you haven't watched that one. So before we get started, give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film all this, because this is like embarrassing stuff. You know what I mean? Like if I film this and it doesn't fix it, you know, I don't need this in my life. I could have just fixed it up and put it back in the machine and not filmed it, but I'm taking the trouble to film it for you. <laughs> So uh, we appreciate everybody that's been hanging out with us and watching us so far. On the last video, we talked about this area right here. The difference between, apparently, a System 8 and a System 9. The System 9 boards were much more popular, and it was stuff like Space Shuttle, the, the legendary pinball game. And the System 9 Space Shuttle boards uh, worked great. Or, you know, there's They have issues like everything does, including the batteries are still on the board. But... It, it's a proven design, and the 9 and System 11 especially, which was the successor, they skipped 10, um, just like they kind of skipped 8. The System 9 and System 11 boards are very similar to this. Um, there's also an 11B and 11C, which has a, something to do with the differences in the sound system, because after this they started with more speech in some of the games and um, had separate audio boards and things like that. But the main difference between an 8 and a 9 is that on an 8, there was no master display board. The display is connected directly to the board. This game only had two. But uh, it could have it could have handled five. They had provisions for five displays, just like a regular pinball machine, and apparently intended to make all of their new games use this board. Uh, but it also ran the power, the high voltage, which is negative 100 and positive 100, onto the board to be distributed back out with these chips to uh, the displays through these ribbon connectors. On the, system on the System 9, they took this off, where the high voltage didn't run onto the board. It ran to a separate board, which is called the master, uh, the, the display master board that, that controls all of the, the displays. And they moved some of this stuff off board onto that board. And we were looking last time, we think we may have figured out why they did that. It's because on both of the boards we have, remember we're working on two of these, both of the boards we had had the same problem. The power supply, uh, one of the, uh, the, the uh, transistors that runs the negative 100 volt section, shorted, and before it blew the fuse, which may have been overfused or whatever, uh, it also burnt up this pin on the board that the negative 100 was running through. That pin is right next to the ground pin. So once it burns, it chars the board in between them, which makes the board basically carbonized, which makes the negative 100 pin connected to the ground pin. So because of that, the displays won't work, even if you fix the power supply section, because they'll, they'll, the negative 100 will be shorted to ground. So we've modified both of these boards by removing this ground pin from the ground plane, cutting it loose. So this negative 100 and the 100, I mean the negative 100 and the ground pin are still connected slightly. <laughs> we tried to isolate them, but it's just, they shouldn't have done it like that. So we've, we've separated that pin to where even though these two are tied together, I think the resistance is like uh, uh, 800 ohms or something like that. Even though they're still tied together, they're, they are not tied to actual ground. This pin isn't connected to anything anymore. And we did it on the back to cut it loose. Um, and then what I'm going to do when I put the connector on is I'm going to cut that pin off. So there will no longer be a ground connected to that pin at all. And the reason I'm cutting the pin off is so that down the future the harness isn't hacked if somebody puts a different board in it. You can do without this ground because the ground plane gets its ground from this power connector as well. And then it also connects in the back box um, on these screw holes to the ground plane in the back box. So you don't, this is a redundant ground line. You don't need that, but it causes a big problem since they've got the high voltage running onto this board. On system nine, they got rid of that altogether. So it doesn't have that, that voltage running there. So I'm sure there's other revisions too that they figured out were a better way to do it. But 
So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start at this corner and I'm going to take this transistor, this uh, audio amp off. I'm going to get rid of my two sockets while I'm at it and then we'll see what we're starting with as far as that. And I'm going to see if I can clean up these resistors and caps and how many of them I'm going to need to replace. Um, it's not a thing where we're, where we're permanently going to fix this. That We'll probably not get rid of all of the corrosion. So it's still going to be there. We're going to try to neutralize it with, with uh, vinegar, but this is probably going to come back eventually. On the back as well, I don't know if I can get a good picture, but all of the pins have corrosion on them in that area. The reason it looks so... Uh, it looks lighter in that area. It's because I rubbed it with a wire brush to get rid of all of the uh, crap on all of these pins. The other option is you could take all of that off and then sand on the board, but then it would end up looking just like this anyway. So <laughs> I literally tried to scrub all of the corrosion I could see off of the pins. Now you can't go crazy with that because you'll cut through all your traces and stuff, but I didn't. I, I went. I, I'm not through the solder mask on any of it. Okay, so we're going to see what we can get accomplished. Uh, I'm not going to remount the batteries in. I've ordered some uh, NVRAM eliminators that we're going to try out and see if that'll work for us. Nobody's ever tried them that I'm aware of or has publicly mentioned trying them on a System 8. They, they use them on System 9s all the time, though, so it should work exactly the same. Um, this chip here, U18, on a System 9, U18 is also the, the 6116 that you replace to make it work without batteries. So if you don't know about that, the 6116 is a RAM chip. The batteries keep power to it so that it uh, um, can save settings and high scores and stuff like that. You can replace this chip with a chip that has a battery built into it. Or I don't even know if it's a battery. You guys know more about it than me. But you can replace this chip, put a new socket in it, and put a new chip in that doesn't need batteries. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, but I'll, I'll pull off this amp. I'll clean up some of this and I'll pull off these two sockets and hopefully by the end of this video we'll see this thing come up and the sound will work. Wouldn't that be great? Bring one back from the dead. We're going to try it. Okay, so here's what was underneath our sound amp, but I was able to get the, the back down to the traces. Look how bad this thing was though. Look at that crap. So that was definitely part of our problem. Yeah. Look at it in high definition. Here, I'm going to get it closer to your face. Yeah. So we're going to replace that. And then here is the socket uh, for the CPU. You can see a bunch of the little legs had broken off. Look at his little legs. About half gone. Look at that. Yeah. And then here was the EEPROM. A bunch of its little legs were broke off too. Look at that. Yeah. Look. Yeah. That ain't going to work like that, people. That's not going to work. So we're going to put new sockets on both of those. Um, and then I'm cleaning up what I can as I go. You know. It's pretty rough, folks. It's pretty rough. So I cleaned up this as good as I could. Of course, we're still going to hit it with the vinegar. But then I haven't done this yet. This chip is suspect. Look, it's it got it pretty rough. But the deal is... These ones that are actually soldered, usually they don't really, uh, they don't screw up as quickly as the ones that are in a socket because you've, you, it's a physical connection. So you've got actual solder connecting it to the, to the board. So I'm able to clean that up, but you know, you can't see what's underneath it. Um, but I, I think this area up here is the worst. So we still got to get up to that. Ugh. So I'm gonna slowly pull all those pins and clean up that area too underneath the pins and uh, see how that ends up. So I'm basically taking the wire brush and just going nuts on these damn resistors because they're all corroded anyway and if they break, they break. I'll have to replace them, you know. But we want to get as much of that crap off as we can. So I did that around these and you know, you're looking a lot better. And we're going to count on the vinegar doing the rest of it. Got this one out. So I'm going to keep working on it. I might have to call in my brother Donnie for help. I have a lot of popsicle stick. <laughs> I'm 
some of the little pins from the uh, from the socket or one of the sockets. Blew. Okay, so I think I got it about as good as I can get it. So these the legs cleaned up pretty good. Clean that up. Clean these up again. There may be something under the tips though. So if you had unlimited time, you might want to remove everything off the board. Uh, this one here, whenever I scraped it, the top came off. I mean, it's just the painting. It's not the, like the chip is actually still there, but now it has like a gold kind of look to it. Um, cleaned up the traces. Everything looks cool. Cleaned up both sides of this chip, 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 or all sides of this chip. And then you saw on uh, this socket, same thing, cleaned out all the pins, got it nice and clean, cleaned all sides of this chip, and again, I'm doing this literally with a wire brush. You saw me getting on this, and I was trying to say, if you break stuff off, well, it was weak. <laughs> it was weak. It has to go. If you break stuff off, it was probably going to break anyway from the corrosion. So I broke off a few things. We're going to replace them. Um, so Q1, Q2, and Q3 broke off. Q5 broke off. And R12 broke off. Also, I took C9 off because it seems like whenever this stuff starts creeping, I don't know, it's, it's probably just my head, but it seems like it affects the capacitors more than it affects resistors and diodes. So... All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna look on the schematics, and we're gonna re well. No, first, I'm gonna clean it. So uh, I'm gonna do the vinegar thing. So I'm gonna take a toothbrush and some vinegar, and I'm gonna brush it on everything that's affected. And so it's an acid with a base. It's supposed to neutralize it. Now I've had people say, oh, "Don't do that. It goes too far the other way." But Look, I didn't invent this. This is I'm doing basically what uh, people have done for years on pinball machines. So it works good for me. Other people have said you might be better off covering your traces with like a conf uh, conformational coating. Is that what it's called? Uh, yeah, but I don't want to spray all over all this crap whenever I put it back on. I'm just going to leave it. But that might be a good thing to do. Why don't you all try it and tell me? Um, I got back on the back and sanded it some more with sandpaper. Basically, I'm trying not to break through the uh, solder mask if I can, because I, I don't want to go too deep and gouge any of the traces, you know. Um, so I'm just, I'm, just, I'm just trying to clean up the corrosion that you can see starting to form on the pins. And I got it a little bit better. Let's see here. I'll get close where you can see kind of how it looks. There you go. So that's kind of what we're working with. But see these black spots on these lines, on the traces? You know what that probably is? You can't get it all, folks. If you, if you need it to be perfect, this ain't the one. But our, our back looks pretty good. Here's the places that uh, a few of the components came off. So, that's where it was starting with. So I'm going to get the vinegar and give it a little bath. Okay, got the vinegar on it. Vinegar. I know that's vinegar because vinegar it told me so. And I use a old toothbrush. Don't use your toothbrush. Use one of the old ones, people. Or use somebody you don't like. And I brushed it all over everything that had corrosion on it with the hopes that it's going to nullify it. And then I got to do the back, too. The back is really easy. It's pretty much flat. And then I'm going to rinse that off with water. Then I'm going to let it sit for a little bit, and then I'm going to pour a little bit of rubbing alcohol on it, because the rubbing alcohol absorbs water, and it evaporates, so it helps the water dry quicker. You don't really have to do that. You can just leave it. 
sitting overnight and it'll dry too. Some people put them in their dishwasher. You can do that too if you want. I don't have a dishwasher here though. But uh, hopefully the uh, vinegar helps with something. <laughs> then we gotta start putting everything back on it. Okay folks, so it's still drying. One thing about it, if you put alcohol on it, it will lighten up the, uh, the alcohol will lighten up the um, uh, PCB material. So this area will be a lighter white whenever we're all done like this is. And it kind of helps you see what's dried. <laughs> Uh, so it's still wet, but it's drying. And the, really, the only reason you need that is because if you get water under this chip, if you let it dry for a day, it'll all dry out. But I'm trying to get it done tonight so I can do it on this video, right? So you put alcohol on it, it will start drying up the, uh, the water. And uh, whenever the alcohol evaporates, it takes the water with it. Okay, so another issue is when you... When you... Uh, when you get these down to bare copper like this, and then you put uh, water and alcohol and vinegar and water and alcohol and everything else on it, they don't really, solder doesn't stick to them very well. So you kind of have to clean them up again with some sandpaper right before you solder the, the pins in. It makes it a little easier. So, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> Woo! So, if you're going to do this, by the way, I'm not sick. I was just telling a guy, one of the worst things about this uh, uh, virus that were happening, I don't want to say the word because then they'll ban me, <laughs> right? This thing that we're having is that whenever you have to cough, people think that you're like infected. I'm not. All right, so, uh, so yeah, before we put in the sockets, we're going to clean those back off to get them nice and shiny again. You don't want to go crazy. You're not trying to scrape off all of the traces, but you, you want them to be shiny. Um, but we're back over here with the stuff that popped off. Q1, 2, 3, and 5, and R12. Oh, and C9. I looked these three up. These are not even listed on the schematics. So, they were not populated. So, on the schematics, they have a nice little drawing here. These were inside the game. You can download these off the internet. They're out there, folks. Uh, so there it is, Q1, 2, 3, 5, R12, and C9. You can see up here the two jumpers, but the other three things aren't even mentioned. They're not very important to them. And so you can kind of figure out what those were. There's a bill of materials here that shows you everything on it. And then also this area is the reset section. Which is this area right here. So Q1... Is a 2N4401, as is Q2, as is Q3, as is Q5. So they're all the same little transistor. And uh, R12 is a 47 ohm quarter watt trans, uh, resistor. And C9 is a 22 microfarad 10 volt capacitor. So uh, I've got all those, and that should be simple. So I'm going to hit it with a little sandpaper, just not going crazy, just a little bit to get it nice and shiny again to get whatever I, crap I just poured all over it, off of it. And then, uh, same on the back, and then go ahead and remount those four transistors, that resistor, and that capacitor. And that, that will get me back where the only thing left is these three items. Okay, so it's important, if you're working on stuff like this that's, that's been damaged, it's, it's kind of important that you check to make sure that the solder goes through the via, the via, the via, whatever. This little trace here, this hole goes from the top to the bottom, and it, as you can see right here under the silk screen, there is a line that runs up here to the top. So what can happen sometimes is you get crap inside of there, corrosion inside of there, and this pin goes through it and is soldered on the back decent, but it's not actually connecting on the top. So see how you can see a little bit of solder in the hole? Over here you can even see a little bit more. So whenever you're soldering on the back, you want to hold it on there just enough where you start seeing you start seeing like a couple of little bubbles actually even, or, or the solder moving a little bit. That's it falling through the hole onto the other side of the, the via. And then, uh, so you can see it did it over here too on the transistor. And you can see it did it on these transistors. 
So you got a nice solid connection. And then what I like to do is check it with a multimeter. So I checked all these traces with a multimeter just to make sure. You're more likely to have a problem with something like this that you've removed than you are of one that's still still on the uh, board that hasn't been removed. Because it's soldered underneath that, you know, what was corrosion and is hopefully now nullified. <laughs> But uh, uh, whenever you, whenever once you make that hole where you take the piece out, uh, you could have some issues with connections. So, but I think it's looking pretty good. So now I'm going to, like again, lightly sand these, just to get them a little shiny again, right on the pad, and then I'm going to put new sockets in, um, so that we can get our our CPU and our our EEPROM back in. So we got our two sockets back on. That all went real clean. It's all good. Cleaned up the two chips and put them back in their sockets. It's easy to tell on this one what was worked on, right? <laughs> the contrast is amazing. All right, so now we got the sound amp and the connector for the um, for the displays still. So let's see what we can do with that. Here's the sound amp. TDA 2002 with corrosion all over the bracket. Bleh. 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 Look at that. Bleh. It almost looks like rust. Maybe it got wet. I don't know if I've got a different screw. Hmm. Maybe I'll look for a different screw. We are taking out the old TDA 2002, which looks like it's seen better days. And putting in a TDA 2003, which is, you know, a, sim a, a similar pin. You can you can upgrade a 2002 with a TDA 2003. The pin configuration is the same, and it's supposed to be a little bit more efficient. But they're the, these are like the cheapest little amps you can get. This thing's like 30 cents or something like that, and it's what was on the board basically. So I've mounted the thing back on. By the way, these are really hard, hard to solder in because it's a heat sink so you can't heat it up to uh, with your iron to get it to <laughs> the solder to stick to it. But you can just fill the holes up with solder which holds it in place and you bend the little brackets back. So we got it on there. Alright, so I'm going to pop that in and put a new screw in. I broke the old one taking the other one off. But I have this real pretty one. Look, it's going to be uh, it's going to be yellow now. All right, folks, the screw wouldn't fit, so I just put a regular one on there that I had. I forgot I, I these are the ones out of uh, uh, the light guns on Area 51 and stuff. I forgot I've got like a thousand of those, and they're all perfect. Uh, so I put that on. I put a little bit of thermal grease on it, and uh, I put the connector on up here. And I cut that pin off that I was talking about, the ground one, because that way if it does short again, the, the wire won't even be connected, even though I've cut it loose from the trace, so we should be good. Um, but, you know, there could be other things wrong with it, but to the best of my ability, this is the best I can clean up the, the corrosion from the alkaline. So... Hopefully this board will cooperate now remember it was already up and running before it just the the sound didn't work Because of all this mess But I honestly think we've got it cleaned up pretty good. I mean, it's it's actually better than I thought it was going to be so Hopefully it'll work if it doesn't we'll have to try to troubleshoot it um, I've got the schematics but hopefully it will cooperate. Doesn't it want to work? You know, I'm trying to help it out here. Nobody else takes the time to do all this. I don't think. I don't think so. Few people, but not many. Not many people. No one around here. So we're gonna pop this back in the game and see if she works. I can't think of anything else to do to it. Now, when the NV RAM comes in, I had to order some. We're going to replace this with it, but we'll do that on a later video. Hopefully, this will come up and work though. Whenever we pop it in. Um, I mentioned on the other board, these resistors up here, that look like crap, but they just run the lights, and if you, if you, uh, 
measure them. I think most of them are 27 ohms. Some of them I think are almost like a direct short. They're like uh, less than one ohm. But it's all in the schematics. But this is very common on Williams machines. They just the way their uh, their light strobes it it just burns up those resistors. They still work. Everything's fine. That's why they have big old resistors in there because they put off a lot of heat. There's upgrades you can do where you can put uh, uh, different transistors in that make it where you can even get rid of the resistors, but it's not that big of a deal, I don't think. Whenever these were first out, they were on location. They were played 24 hours a day, <laughs> seven days a week for 10, 12 years, and they end up looking like that. If I put this in somebody's house and they play it two hours, two hours every couple weeks, it's not an issue, you know? But, hopefully the sound will cooperate. Let's go pop it in the machine and see. Keep your fingers crossed. I might have, when I did the reset section, I might have screwed up the rest of it. Keep your fingers crossed. Okay, folks, so we've stuck it back in. You're watching for this top fuse here. See if it blows. I've got the displays and everything plugged in. We're going to just see. Now, our problem was tons of corrosion on the board. Sound section did not work. The displays didn't work. Okay, so let's see if we've still got something like that going on. It did not blow the fuse. We've got a zero on the, the little thing, which is good. <laughs> we've got something on the display. Can't tell where we're at in test mode. Ah, uh, we're up and running. Yeah, the displays are messed up. Well, that's okay. So let's see if we got any sound. I hear a humming from the lights. Try to start it. Hmm, I can't tell if the sound's working at all. It's making some humming noises, but uh, that could just be from the lights, actually. When the lights light up, it hums. Hmm. Well, hell. We're getting there, though. <laughs> we, we, we fixed the corrosion, and we fixed the power problem on the displays, apparently, whenever we did the... Uh, Remember we did the power supply, but they look like crap. Hmm. Let me see if I can get in the test. Yeah, there we go. So it's trying to do the test right now. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. Usually whenever you've got segments like that missing, you've got there's something going on on the board. I bet a bunch of those chips are screwed up on the board. And the top one's not working. Um I'm gonna swap the two ribbon cables on the on the displays and see if that makes the top one light up. If it does, then it's definitely on the board. All right, so I reversed the ribbon cable, and um, yeah, so the top display is working the same way the bottom one is, which means it's the board. Okay, so we got display problems on the board, and the sound is still not working. So uh, I think we'll ignore the display problems for now. And we'll see if we can concentrate on trying to get the sound to make a peep and do anything. Because um, that would be cool. So I think what I'll do for now is I'll unplug the two ribbons going to the displays just so that it doesn't screw up. And then uh, we'll eventually have to take the, the board back out to fix the sound anyway. But I'll, uh, I'll see if I can hook up a, uh, maybe hook up a logic probe and we can test it in the cabinet maybe. Possibly. What do you think about that? Okay, we'll end up looking at the schematics here in a minute, but the first thing I tried was I've swapped out the 6808 that's in it for a 6802, which is similar. A 6802 has RAM built into it, though. It's an older chip. So basically, by doing that, uh, you're putting two RAM chips running at the same time, which isn't really the best thing to do, but <laughs> sometimes on pinball machines you can do that to test it. Um, 
so I'm hitting a single, and if you listen, the boom is the lights moving. It's the hum and the lights, but if you listen, there's a little whistle that goes So it's trying to make some kind of signal that's just not getting processed right. So, but I believe it's working the same with that uh, with that CPU chip in there. So, I'm going to next pull out the ROM and we're going to test it in the EEPROM burner to make sure that the ROM is good. Hey folks, these are our schematics. We are testing the ROM. It is in fact the 27128 that's in the game. So we got our little ROM tester out. ROM burner TL8662 plus. These things work really good actually. They're cheap too. About the cheapest thing you can get. Okay, so I have downloaded the ROMs off of the Internet Pinball Database. They have all of the pin MAME ROMs, which the whole purpose of MAME and pin MAME is that it's an exact copy of the original. So the ROM files are the exact same ones in the game. So I've set it up and it passes. So the file on the chip is correct. Successful. So the ROM chip's good. Now it could be that I screwed up the socket whenever I put a new socket on the CPU or on the ROM chip. So that would be the next thing that we check probably. Um, so I'm probably going to have to pull the board back out and just double check all of those to make sure I didn't miss a trace. Make sure all the traces are connected where they're supposed to be, which you can do by literally tracking them down on the schematics. Um, so here's our uh, our CPU. I can check all of these lines and make sure they go where they're supposed to go. Takes a while, but it can be done. And then the same with the EEPROM. Check them all, make sure they're connected where they're supposed to connect. So that's probably my next case because, you know, it, it's more likely to be something that I actually worked on. I pulled the, the uh, those screwed up sockets out. I, I might have messed up a pin. And just one pin being off can make it do that. So um, that'll, be, uh, that'll probably be next. I'm going to look online, too, and see if anybody's discussed how they fixed the sound on a System 9 because it's pretty much the same. And make sure that there's not something obvious, like it's the DAC or something like that. So um, I'll come back when I find something. So I started looking again. There is a wire that has came loose from the connector on the power supply. That wire is gray and yellow. What do you think about that? I'm going to look in the schematics. Now on Pennant Fever, since it's so rare, uh, there isn't really a good wiring diagram that came with it. It's just the schematics for the board. And so it doesn't show all the wires off of the power supply. But the very next game was Space Shuttle. And Space Shuttle is very popular, so there's tons of schematics for it. So these are the Space Shuttle schematics that use the same power supply. And this is that connector on the power supply. Gray and yellow connects to pin 2, so it's disconnected. If you follow it down, oh, it runs negative 12 to the CPU board, you say? What? Well, I wonder what they would use the negative 12 for on the CPU board. So back over here on the pennant fever schematics. So there's the CPU, just for the sound section. And the button at switch 3 is a diagnostic switch, so I guess if you hit that, it plays like all the sounds. And then this is the RAM, 6810. And this is the ROM that we checked. It was fine. And then you have an LS138 over here that does something or the other. Who knows? And then you have the peripheral interface adapter, a 6821. All right? And then... The sound, so the sound select inputs from the CPU on the the um, main game, like the main CPU, come over, talk to the PIA, and it selects them, right? And then it sends its outputs to this chip, which goes through this transistor, through the volume control, and is amplified, right? So here's the speakers. Here's the amp that we replaced. It runs off of 12 volts. But... 
this chip runs off of what? Oh, it needs a negative 12 volts. It's not even hooked up right now. Ah. Boy, that'd be cool if that fixed it, wouldn't it? Look, it needs it right here, too. Okay, so temporarily, I'm just going to smash that wire back in where it goes. With the power off, people. Don't freak out. I'm going to smash it back in that insulation displacement connector. And if that fixes it, we'll, uh, we will replace the connector. But, I mean, it, even if it doesn't fix it, it has to be replaced because it definitely needs that negative 12. This 14140B, is that the uh, DAC? Is that what that is? The digital to analog converter? Or do they not have one of those on here? Let's see what that is. So it's U48 IC MC1408 digital to analog converter. Would you look at that? Even a blind squirrel finds a nut every once in a while. Okay, so I have jammed the wire down in the pin that it's supposed to be in. Let's see if we get anything different. Oh, and on these, so it's coming up in test mode because the batteries are dead because I have them removed because we're putting the NVRAM thing on it, but we haven't got it yet. Uh, so when it comes up, it's in test mode. On a Williams game, and only a Williams game, if you turn it off and right back on real quick, which usually I tell people do not do, <laughs> If you turn it off and right back on, the little jump of power makes it start in, in game mode. So we're going to test it out. So, test mode. Sounds the same. Let's try to coin it up. Oh, hell. I don't know if that sounded right. Though. This might be really loud because I turned it up earlier. Okay, so let's say it pitches the ball. That's a triple. Double. Out. Single. <laughs> we fixed the sound section, folks. What do you think about that? It might have been fine the whole time, though. What if it was fine the whole time and it was just that wire? I mean, that wire definitely was keeping it from working. It could have been I could have left that rotted, corroded-ass board in there for another 10 years. What do you think? But hey, at least we got it cleaned up, I believe. I think we got it cleaned up really nice. You saw it. You saw the video. You're watching it right now. <laughs> okay, so we got the sound, but we do not have the displays. So we'll do that next time. This is going to be a long series. I can see that coming. You see how stuff just, like, bites at you constantly? Now, if this was in your home game room, you might just... Leave that wire stuck in that in that socket, but I can't do that. I'm selling it, you know, so I can't sell it to somebody with with a wire that might pop out at any time. So I got to fix that too. So there's all kinds of little things you have to mess with, and we haven't even played it yet. We haven't even tested anything. We haven't even rebuilt the bats yet. Um, we haven't done anything. We haven't fixed the light bulbs yet. The displays aren't even working yet, you know. So it just takes a long time to do it, and these are not. Um, these are not super valuable games anyways. So, but uh, what I'll do is I'll, uh, I'll film a video of it, uh, of us fixing the uh, displays next and see what we can get done on that. And then we'll try to get that connector done and wrap all that stuff up. And we could also do, this still needs some connectors. So we're moving slowly through it, people. Hope you've enjoyed it so far. Give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it for you. And leave your comments down below. Uh, we appreciate everybody that's been using our Amazon links. That's really been picking up lately, too. So whoever it is out there using them so much, thank you very much. And I'd also like to say to whoever it is out there that's... I've seen somebody's been buying, like, uh, knee braces and some therapeutic stuff for their knee. So whoever's having knee problems out there, <sighs> man, I hope you feel better soon. I know uh, Joe has had knee problems. He had knee surgery done a couple times. I know that uh, that's a big pain, and it really cuts down your mobility, so... Hope whoever that is gets better soon, but we see all of you out there using our Amazon link. We appreciate that. If you don't know about that, if you're going to buy something on Amazon, just click our link before you do, and it gives us a little royalty. So we appreciate everyone that's been doing that. Leave your comments below. And by the way, have you checked out our brother channel, My Brother Donnie? My Brother Donnie is even crazier than we are. So go check that out if you get time. We've got the link down below. I'm over there with them a lot of times. We're working on an old jailhouse right now where we're... Uh, 
putting a new roof on it and everything else. That's, oh Lord, <laughs> it's a big mess. But we're getting there. So uh, uh, we've been doing that. We've been working on, uh, we've, we fixed up a mobile home that was completely destroyed. We've been working on some cars and some trucks. And Donnie's always uh, doing stuff on the farm and all of that. So he's a, he's a hoot. Check that out if you get time. And I uh, hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you on the next video where we'll finally get those displays working. But aren't we getting there, though? We're kind of, they're kind of coming back slowly. They're starting to cooperate a little bit. Hopefully they'll continue to. We'll see you on the next video.